Hey everyone, it's Baron again. Um, so what I'm going to do is, in this video, I want to show you a new approach uh, that I'm using for my models for ortho, um, for ortho aligner planning. So the first thing I want to point out is that the blessing of the curse of digital dentistry is that things are constantly changing. And sometimes that can frustrate you because the moment you learn one technique digitally, there's another technique that's released and you feel like you wasted your time. Know this, first of all, anytime you learn something, you're only going to be improving your skills, making the new technique to learn even faster and also a new technique doesn't make the old technique any worse it just simply is pointed out a new faster way or a more efficient way to do things so I apologize I, I keep up my old videos because there's still a lot of tidbits I cover in other videos that I don't cover every single time um, and so I think that there are some still useful tips in there but I try to update what is the most current uh, way I'm doing things so anyway this video uh, is gonna highlight the, s the simplest approach I've found the shortest amount of time I can possibly spend in mesh mixer and my overall planning process the biggest thing is when we take our models into blue sky plan or any other ortho software the more complex the model the more work the the ortho software has to do to uh, do the planning so we're going to try to uh, cut down that timing cut down the complexity of our models <clears throat> and um, yeah keep things simple and keep things moving around quickly so in this case uh, my plan is simply to treat the lower. All I'm going to be doing is bringing these uh, teeth into occlusion. He's got an open bite back here. Uh, there's a little more that goes into this story in this case, but um, I'm going to try to settle the bite in the posterior, both sides, but primarily his right side here. So in this case, really bringing in the upper is of no consequence. I really did that just for, for demonstration. Uh, I really don't even need to do that in this case, but... Um, so all right, here we go. I'm going to hide the, the upper. Now, I am going to do... Three things are my steps. And this one, the first step may be unnecessary, but I still want to walk you through my normal steps. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to clean up any extra data. This is actually a pretty clean model. Maybe some little extraneous data here and there. But just, in, just for demonstration purposes, the first way I clean up data is to come to Edit, Plain Cut, and then I drop this down. Now, if you ever get these hashtags that can be annoying, use your up and down arrow, and you can increase the number of hashtags and allow you to kind of refine where you're going. Now, it looks okay here, except you see this gingival defect, and we want to make sure we do capture that well. So I'm going to go below that. And all I'm doing is I'm doing sort of a, a blunt dissection of extra data here. It's not trimming everything. It's just trimming some of the extraneous stuff. Um, quickly for me and in a case where you got a lot of the floor of the mouth it will really help so I click accept now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim the, the other areas that I don't like super simple hit the select button or just the S button I stay off the model click once twice and I'm just inscribing the area I want to delete if you look closely it's now highlighted hit the delete button it's now gone on this model, there's really only one other area I need to do that on, and that's right here. I don't like positive surfaces that stick back up, if that makes sense. Delete. And now we've got a pretty clean model. I mean, this little bit of positive surface, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, okay. So now I am done trimming the border. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a plain cut off the distal. Now, when you use these little, uh, this little widget to turn things on an angle, when you've based the model, it tends to be much slower to move because it's trying to reclose the model each time. When you haven't closed the model, it moves much more easily. Okay, So just know that. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm going to do a quick, straight cut, um, a vertical cut, if you will. Now, I'm going to try to keep a little bit of a heel off of both of these teeth. Not, it doesn't have to be a lot, but um, you know, a little bit is nice. All right, that should be good. I'm going to hit Accept. I've got a nice vertical cut in both of those. And that's it. I am done with Mesh Mixer. Quick little cleanup. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Final step. Control A, which is the same thing as selecting or highlighting the whole thing. And I'm going to press B, which is the same thing as um, smooth boundary. And all that's going to do is make sure the edges are nice and smooth. This isn't super critical because we're going to be uh, blue sky plan will smooth it anyways. This to me is just a, 
uh, a little catch step. If it turns the whole model red, it no I know that I did not smooth something out. So anyway, that's just quick and easy. And now I am done. I'm going to export. And I'm going to call this um, BSPO ready. Um, sorry. Lower BSPO ready. All right. And there I am done. I'm not messing with the upper, so I don't need to do anything about it. And I can go ahead and close this. Don't need to save this. I'm all done. So now I'm in Blue Sky Plan. And I need to open up that model. So I'm going to click on this opening button. And there's my model. And I can click OK. So here's the deal. When I tell it it's a mandible, and this patient's name is um, Doe J. And I can go ahead and import the oppose, and that's irrelevant really for what I'm going to show you. But let's hide that. Move forward. Let's quickly mark the teeth. I'm holding the shift button, and I am left clicking. If I'm ever missing a tooth, I can right click, and it puts a little blue. Let's just go one tooth back. And I'm just marking the mesial and distal. Stay in the middle of the tooth. Don't get down deep along the gingiva. I've seen too many people try to do that, get fancy with their placement, and it only messes things up. These teeth are pretty well, you know, well aligned um, rotation-wise. Um, I hit finish marking teeth. It sets the the arch axis. And now I'm going to click close model. Normally, I've always avoided that. Because it's a hollow model, but I've usually based it outside of Blue Sky Plan. Well, I'm going to hit Close Model. Now, I have set my parameters on how tall I want this model. Now, I've recently updated, so I should check to make sure that I have the right number. The number I want is 16 millimeters, and I'll show you how to check that in just a moment. So right here, here are my models. They're flat. They're not perfectly flat. These little lines tell me they are not perfectly flat, and it might not be print worthy as is. But I'm going to show you in a little bit how that doesn't matter. Okay, so f I will check right quick um, tools, preferences, orthodontics, close model height, 16 millimeters. I don't recall if that is now the default or not. We've talked about that. It used to be much higher. Know that 16 millimeters is a good place to have it. The the reason is is that means when your mo when your aligner is stretched, it's not going to be stretched too thin. If it's too tall, you'll end up with really thin plastic on the incisal edges and cusp tips. Um, however, always check up here. This is going to be okay, but if you've got really tall incisors, particularly upper central incisors, you might have to increase that height just to account for that and not end up clipping them off. So when this video picks up, I'm going to show you how I now make this print ready, even though I don't have a big platform or perfectly flattened off heels. Okay, so at this point, we have uh, completed the actual orthodontic plan for this case. And um, there's quite a few models in this because we are extruding posterior teeth. That just takes a while. It takes some patience. Um, we, could, we could cut down the models the, if we wanted and do faster, you know, larger movements. But... Um, I'm okay, you know, using a little extra resin, a, little extra, a, little, a few more trays, and a little more time to make sure we get a good result. But anyway, the point is, here's our models. Uh, we're ready to export these and get these printing. And so this is where the, um, w you know, where the beauty of the simplicity comes in with the very minimal mesh mixer work. So first, I'm going to go ahead and export these. Um, I have added the patient's name to it because it occurred to me that um, he actually approved using his case as a. Uh, an educational case. Lower models. Wait for a minute while it approves or while it does the export. Um, and uh, then we will go ahead and open up uh, our printing software. In this case, I'm using the Rayware software, which is with the Moonray printers. Um, so for in this folder that I created for this patient, uh, I have this little 
a file called nine platform. Now, this wouldn't normally be in this folder. I would keep it somewhere else because it's a universal file. But for this video demonstration, I've included it in the folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this into my Rayware software. And you see all it is uh, is a collection of nine of the platforms I created a while back. And I've, you may have seen in some of my other videos. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click over here in this orientation. And I'm going to click once right in the middle of the Y axis button. And then I'm going to center this right in the middle of the, the build platform. Now, I want to point out this idea is not purely mine. I, you know, I put my own little twist on it, but for the most part, um, Stephen Shaw, Dr. Stephen Shaw, was the uh, greatest influence to, to this. Um, also, uh, I saw a, a, you know, a sort of a similar note on this with Marco Tadros. Uh, he, he's added little pieces. And you'll see what I mean, how this works. So basically, these little print platforms are going to stay in here. Um, and I'm going to add my models. So let's come to the lower models that I just added. In this case there's nine of them, so we get the zero plus the first eight treatment models. Personally I, I think that's too many because if th things don't track it's a waste of time and um, you know materials but mainly the time for the processing uh, for your assistant. But really um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a surprise to do you know a couple cases or even um, using uh, if you're doing upper and lower models at the same time. Alright so let's zoom in here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, flip these models over. A couple different ways to do that. You can come here and you can rotate them like this um, but then you're starting to spin them so what I've actually been doing instead is I just click here, click on the heel, click here, click on the heel because there is a flat area. It's not perfectly flat. Um, in fact I do like to be consistent with it. Let's uh, uh, because then I know it's they're all going to be the same flatness to the the build plate. If the let's click here, let's hide this menu. Click here, and I'm being told by the uh, Sprintware folks that developed the software that very soon we will be able to uh, do this more quickly without having to click individual models uh, as I am doing here. It's not a big deal. It's just fewer button clicks inherently means faster. So, Okay, so now we've got them all um, kind of stood up on their ends. I can drag them over top of here. And let's just bring them all. And I'm centering this little uh, widget right over top of the model, over top of the, uh, over top of the platform, over top of the platform. And you get the idea. Uh, you, next, I'm going to spin them. Most of the time, I actually spin them, you know, move, spin, move, spin, move, spin. I'm kind of trying this on the fly here. Um, so let's spin this. Okay. Center it a little better. Spin it. And center it. Spin it. And now this may seem tedious, and may, I suppose it is, um, but uh, it's easy. Uh, there's not a whole lot of thinking, not a lot of processing power going on the computer. It's just a little bit of, you know, move it, spin it, move it, spin it, move it, spin it. Um, and if we can get the folks at Sprint Ray to give us the ability to just highlight multiple models and then, or, you know, spin at the same time, which uh, <laughs> I have requested um, just recently so I mean hopefully that will be coming in a s very soon update to the software uh, that will make this process uh, that much faster and much m and so much more desirable as opposed to the previous methods uh, I have advocated in the past okay so here we go so now uh, pretty quick it's I mean it's not a big deal uh, it's not you don't have to be perfect but the idea is um, in this sorry This model could probably rotate just a little. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can be very picky about getting things just right. Okay. All right. So now, all you can see all the print beds or the platforms, of course, are touching. They're going to print well, and then the models are essentially invested right within it. Let's move this one back a little bit since it's uh, slightly violating the print platform. 
That's why it's red like that. There we go. And let's move this back a little. And then let's move the whole print platform back. Okay. So now none of the models are touching each other. Uh, this one maybe a little bit. I can see a space. That's what I'm looking for. Space, space, space. And I, I went very quickly through this as far as rotating and everything. But there's space through all of them. None of them are violating the print platform. They're all embedded within these platforms. The bevel, the platform itself has a little bevel to it. So you should be able to get an instrument right underneath there and pop them all off very quickly and easily. Uh, and lastly, if you did have a teeth where they were severely retroclined, these teeth are somewhat retroclined, but the, the nature of the lingual surface doesn't really worry me about that. But if you needed to print on an angle, it's as simple as tipping them back like this. Now, if you want to do a very specific angle of your tilt, you could also come in here and uh, mess with the degrees of the tilt um, right in these, you know, specifically put in 10, 20 degrees. So that is it for this uh, process. Uh, hopefully that clears it up and gives you guys some ideas and ways to print a little more efficiently uh, and also get through the, the design aspect of the software uh, quicker and more efficiently as well. All right, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and uh, you might consider subscribing just so that you get any future videos that I post. All right, thanks a lot. Bye for now.